five, four, three, two, whoa, what? That was kind of anticlimactic. All right, today we're running the boat aground intentionally, which is something I have never got used to doing. Was that clickbait? No, that, that was not clickbait. The most suspenseful part is still to come. Hold on. So we're now on the beach and the tide is going. We are under a time crunch. This is called a crab. This goes under the side of the boat and this keeps the boat from tipping over when the tide goes. The whole purpose of what we're doing today is to try to get under the boat to do some maintenance and some cleaning. We only have a couple minutes to get this crab under the boat before it tips over. And if your crab's not held together with rope, stop overachieving. No, seriously, I don't really like the idea of the crab being held together with rope. I didn't know it was missing a board till I came down here. Now it's too late to change the board. But this is the stressful part. We gotta get the crab placed in the perfect location so we don't crush anything under the boat, any through hulls or screens. We also can't get it too far forward or too far backwards. We can't get it too far in or too far out. Now this part of the process doesn't always go as planned. Sometimes the crab will get in the wrong spot, cause some damage. In worst case scenario, sometimes the boats will even crush the crabs and tip over, which is not ideal. We don't wanna crush a crab, but that's always a possibility. Knock on wood, it's never happened to me. We go on the beach two hours after the high tide and we'll float two hours before the next high tide. So we have about four hours in the middle there that we can work under the boat. We don't have any dry docks or anything like that near us. The closest one's about an hour and a half away. So we make do with the beach that we got. So here in Maine, we actually have some of the biggest tides in the world, which is convenient for doing stuff like this. If you go to the eastern part of Maine in the Bay of Fundy by Eastport, they actually have the highest tide recorded in history right there. We have like 10, 12, 13 footers here, but that's just right for getting under the boat to work on them. We're just holding the crab in place for the time being to let the tide go enough so the boat will lean over onto the crab and hold it in place. If we leave too early, we run the risk of the crab popping out before the boat gets to lean on it. If the boat falls over and lands on the beach, whoa, easy girl. So as sketchy as it sounds, my foot is holding this whole entire operation success. If the boat falls over, not only could it cause damage when it falls and when it impacts the ground, there's a big risk of it not being able to float again because it's at such a steep angle. The water actually comes in the stern and runs all the way up to where we stand. And if the hatches aren't watertight, which most hatches are not, the hatches will actually fill full of water before the boat has a chance to float and drain the water. So there's a lot of risk involved in this. I've never liked doing this, but it's part of it. So the whole goal of what we're trying to accomplish here is clean the bottom and add some zincs. I suspect that the bottom of the boat is really dirty. I'm not really sure. We've lost about two knots on our cruise speed, which sucks. Burning a lot more fuel than normal, over hundred gallons a day because of this loss in speed, making each of our days a lot longer than they should be. I'm thinking we got a lot of barnacles growing on the bottom or some grass growing on the bottom. My copper paint must be getting old and need to be replaced. We have paint on the bottom that's supposed to prevent stuff from growing. I'm assuming that's worn out and we got some growth, but we'll find out here in the next two or three hours when the tide's gone. Hopefully the boat's sitting pretty on the crab and we'll get to work. Your boat's not leaking on dry land. Your boat is way too nice. All right, the tide is gone and the boat is still sitting upright. We did not crush the crab yet. There is still always that possibility. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but we're gonna go check the boat out. I have a vibration that I've been trying to track down for a while. I can't figure out where it is, so I'm hopeful we can find it. I'm also trying to find the reason we lost two knots of speed. I can already see some grass growing right here on the front. The grass growing on the bottom, barnacles growing on the bottom adds drag to the boat. Doesn't look quite as dirty as I hoped it would be. It doesn't look like two knots. It's probably lost about a knot to this grass that we can see so far which will be good. One knot would be great to get back. Halfway suspected to see a little bit of rope in the wheel, but we don't have any. The old zinc is still here. We have zincs on the boat and these protect the important metal. This is basically just a sacrificial metal. It's soft and all the electrolysis in the ocean eat this instead of the important stuff. So we keep up on these, we gotta replace these. This is loose, so this could be part of my vibration actually. When this is spinning really fast, this gets off balance. That could be a large part of the vibration. There's another zinc back here on the rudder, does the same thing, protects the stainless steel rudder. Oh. We're missing bolts in the shoe. That's where the vibration came from that I've been trying to find for like six months now. We gotta go find some bolts to fix that. We don't have a lot of time to do this. We gotta go find four bolts, get this back in place and bolt it on, and we gotta clean the bottom of the boat. We had plenty of time to get this done, but now we're in a bit of a hurry. The tide is not gonna wait for us to finish the job. My dad bought this stuff when I could just walk. He bought a whole entire hardware store stock that was going out of business. Which has been pretty handy as a kid growing up over the years. I don't know if it's handy for him. He keeps restocking it. I keep cleaning it out. I don't know what size we need, so we're gonna get a handful of all. They're around five six eight three eight that is awesome Good old Jaybird. He's restocked it a few times over the years. I probably owe him a restock or two. I guess I got that coming with my kids. I don't know if I owe it to them or him. I don't know how that really works when it's passed down. Works good today. Thanks for visiting Knowles Hardware. Jacob, grab a screwdriver or something to wedge underneath that. Cause you gotta get that clean under that. You can't have dirt under that. Yeah, I would say that's my vibration that I've been hunting for for a year. Cause it's been getting worse too. Yeah. So, the, so they sit flat. That ain't gonna tighten down on them. 
We are running a tight time crunch. The crab is looking weaker and weaker all the time, which is sketchy. We're avoiding getting underneath that side. We also have a repair to make back there on the keel that I did not anticipate having to make, which is taking a lot of extra time that we don't have. But dad came down to help us gather parts while I clean the bottom. This is the not so glamorous part of the job, but it's something that we gotta do. It's gonna make the days much more enjoyable gaining back that extra knot or two. I'm getting rid of that god awful vibration that I've been trying to find for six months. And I've had divers come down and look, ground it out multiple times. I didn't notice it last time. I assume it's been getting loose over time. Now it's just completely let go. So I am pretty happy we found that. I was hoping the boat was gonna be a little bit dirtier than it was to answer the question of why I'm going two knots slower than I used to be going. It looks like with this grass, we lost about a knot. We'll see when we get her back in the water, she'll float around nine tonight. Barnacles gonna die tonight. Well, there's a bunch of small barnacles in there. Those are actually the culprits of speed, more than the grass. Those little buggers will take some speed. We gotta get rid of them. So these zincs on the shaft and the rudder, we change out ideally a few times a year. These ones have been on here for six, seven months and they're still intact, which is pretty good. Hopefully get another six, seven months out of them. Some places closer to larger harbors have actual dry docks with lifts, which would be sweet. We don't have that luxury. We're like an hour and a half from the closest one. They got a big one in Stonington. If I'm going to Stonington, and it's for something pretty serious. <laughs> Nothing personal to Stonington, but we don't like taking boats to Stonington. Dad's back with the parts. Hopefully we can get that rudder back together. I'm really glad that we found that. That vibration has been driving me crazy. Ain't a grinder, Jeremy, but it's working. Good old fashioned yeah. elbow grease. Yeah. Cave tools. <laughs> cave tools for cavemen. Yeah. There you go. Take him back to the hardware store. I was telling the camera about the hardware store earlier. How convenient that's been my whole life. You that's take bolts. The best thing I ever bought. You take bolts out of it and they just keep restocking. It's a good. Re <laughs> Who do you think restocks them, Jacob? Santa Claus? Who do I owe it to? Do I owe it back to you or do I owe it to Jason Kai when they get older? I'm assuming you did that to Dumpa too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So does it just keep getting passed yeah, down? Yeah, Is yeah. that how it goes? Or? When did you say generations? Yeah. yeah. There you go. So I owe them, not you. Yeah, I mean, don't get under that side. That boat, I have seen them fall. It ain't good. Red Loctite. I think you're only supposed to put it on like one or two threads, but we're putting it on like six or seven threads just to make sure. Because if something is on a boat and it can break, it will break. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I just see get in the bank. All right, so we got the repair done on the rudder shoe. Now what we're doing is we're gonna, instead of waiting for the tide to come back in, we're gonna dig a trench under the boat and bring the water back to the boat so it'll float early. I'm, I'm joking. I'm that joking. was a good idea. It was, it, I'd probably be a little while. That would be a big hole. We got these bolts, the heads that stick out right here. We got Pogi Persane in coming up in the middle of June. And the last year, these little bolts gave us such a hard time. And they're up underneath as well. And the net would float up under the boat and catch on these. When they did, we couldn't get it off without ripping the net. The idea is to try to bury them in 5200. So that way the net can't catch on them. 5200 is magical glue that we use on boats anytime we get the chance. This is basically what holds lobster boats together. If you've got any issues, you just put 5200 on it. Boat duct tape. Oh, barnacles. The bolts are on the bottom of the skeg. They're also buried in barnacles. Not the easiest chance to get to. That's kind of satisfying. Those barnacles don't look big right now. They're not really that big of an issue, but they just keep growing bigger and bigger. So if you don't get them when they're small, while well, we got the opportunity to get them, just becomes a problem down the road. Barnacles are a killer of speed and fuel burn. Who even is Mike Rowe anyway? The amount of times I had to swim down underneath this boat last pogey season is ridiculous. Every time we set the Persane out, pogies would swim it in underneath the wheel, the net would float up underneath this skeg, and it would get caught on these little heads of these bolts right here. This is an impossible chance. I need to dig a bigger hole, I think, but I'm hoping I can bury these bolts with 5200 to make a smoother surface so the net doesn't catch once we start pogey fishing. The tide's starting to come, too. We don't have much time left. I have no idea if this is gonna work. This is an impossible spot to get at. Good thing is with 5200, the magic boat glue is it dries underwater. Water actually accelerates it drying. We're just gonna try to get it on there. All right, we are good to go. Everything looks good. We got it cleaned up. We don't have to scrub the bottom of the boat at all. The cleaner that we use just kills the grass. That's all it's used for. If we have barnacles, that's when we have to scrub. Fortunately, we didn't have too many barnacles, but as you can see, the bottom of the boat already looks much cleaner. So hopefully we gain back at least a knot, maybe a knot and a half. Get some of that speed back, get some of that fuel burn back down. And we'll also definitely have some reduced vibration. I'm pretty positive that was the culprit to the vibration that I've been trying to find since last fall. So now the only thing left to do is wait for the tide to come back in. The boat will float, we'll pull it off, go put it back on the moor, and it should 
float around nine o'clock tonight. So that's it. We'll be headed back out soon to haul some traps, take you through the traps. Maybe we'll be going a little faster and a little smoother. Well, Jacob, what's you up to, bud? We are preparing for an ad. You gotta film for short form content. It's a body wash ad. For it to be authentic, we gotta be dirty, so. So if you wanna see the finished product of our ad, you can head on over to the short form and check it out.